I think, Julian, that we lived in a little box. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't, uh, from where we lived in that box, uh, and what we were permitted to see in our education, we had a very skewed view, a limited view of America. Mm. And, um, and black people in the movement were among the most idealistic people mm -hmm. in the country. They were done in by our idealism? Right. I mean, somebody who knew Thurgood said, um, Thurgood Marshall really believes that there's no problem in America that can't be solved by the Constitution of the United States properly applied. Mm. And um, these people were all American patriots. They believed in the American dream and they, they believed in the promise of America. And so, uh, and as I say, virtually all the white people they knew were terrific mm, people. Yeah. So, And it must have been all the more disappointing and disillusioning as it as they become aware, as we become aware, that these things are not going to happen like that. It's not going to be 63. It's not going to be the 100th anniversary. It's got to be a rude Well, it was shock. rude, but then, uh, the, the, for me, the shock was, um, it, it animated me. It, mm. uh, because the shock, every fall, there was at least one violent, hideous outbreak in this evolving morality tale. And I remember with Clinton, Tennessee, and a guy yes. named Casper blowing up yes. stuff. Yes, John Casper. Right. There was, of course, Little Rock. There was uh, Plaquemines Parish in um, in uh, Some right little outside town of New in Orleans. Texas a year before. Right. So. So all of a sudden you're energized because it really was good and evil. And of course in, their, in, in that period you also had the Montgomery bus boycott and the emergence mm -hmm. of Martin King. So all of a sudden, instead of getting depressed, what you're seeing is a morality tale in which black people are becoming energized.